easy. This is Steve from Scar. Today we're just going to be going through our Fractions VIP, which will be out on heads in a few days, weeks, or, or something rather. Um, Fractions was uh, on our first album for Metalheads back in 2016, the Orchid Project. So it's five years uh, this year in, in, in July. So we thought we'd just give it a, a little refresh and have another look at it. So today I'm just going to go through um, our working process a little bit. We have a little look at the plugins, a little bit, little look at the signal flow, um, etc. Just mainly on the drums and the bass. I mean, everything else is practically the same. Do you know when we loaded this truck up this morning? This is on a brand new computer, so we've had to revisit most of our EQ settings and compression settings. Um, so yeah, so what we do, I just solo this for now. So. Here we go, this is our drum. So in the original track, we only had four breaks, which is which is these four here. Um, it's pretty simple, really. We had, uh, if I just solo these down, mute these down. So our main break here, which is just a main of a backbone, it's like a, just a nice low mid, quite, quite punchy. Um, we had a live break over the top of that, it just gives it a nice bit of air and a bit more character. Um, an 808 ride, which has been side chains, as you can see, off the main loop and then low past. So we just get it triggering off the kick drum. Got a 50 cal break there, which just gives it a nice little roll. Now, like I mentioned a second ago, when we loaded this up this morning, we had to redo all the compression settings and all the EQ, and so we've done what we were doing and, and just thought it just sounded like it was missing something. It could have been because obviously we, we, we've looked at it a little bit differently today. Um, or whatever reason, we just thought maybe the, the best thing to do is just find another break. So we went with this classic John bass break, um, like so. It just gives it a little bit more body, just a bit more air, maybe a bit more excitement for the VIP as well. Just on to the bus processing. So the bus processing, we, 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 this is the starting point we, we do for most tracks. Um, a couple of Pro L's, the virtual mix rack normally a, a pro Q and, and obviously other plugins if and, and when they're needed. I'll start here though, this is the passive EQ, something I've been using for a long, long time. I think Charlie Brake originally showed me this probably back in 2006-7, something like that. Um, it's based on a manly massive passive and really what I use this for is this high shelf and, and low pass settings. Um, so what this allows you to do is set the low pass and high shelf to the same frequency. So we've got this set at 12k and the high shelf set, sorry, the high shelf set at 12k. And we've got that boosting into the low pass filter. It just gives a really nice EQ curve, smooths out all your kind of your nasty digital uh, uh, sounds there and, and gives you a nice smooth airy um, top end. Our other EQ is the Pro Q. And again, just doing the really broad settings, just a tiny little notch there, moving the DB out of the, the low mids, a little boost from the kick drum and, and a little bit of boosting on the top. Uh, first in our chain is our mix bus. This is probably where most, most of the sort of action is going on. Just going into the Brit end, which is the um, Neve setting on the virtual channel, into the Neve um, uh, uh, preamp. And then our FG401, which is an emulation, I think, of the SSL bus compressor. We're hitting this quite hard, actually, just to give it a little bit of glue. Um, slow attack, fast release, and a fair bit of makeup just to, 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 to make up for the, for the gain reduction there. Straight into the Neve EQ. Now, this is quite an aggressive, quite chunky EQ, so not even a dB of, of, of gain on these two. Uh, you know, seven, oh, 700 hertz, seven, yeah, 700 hertz and, um, and 3K. Um, and then straight into the SSL, kind of the complete opposite to the Neve. There's a lot more sort of refined, nice smooth sound. Got a tiny bit of top end and a tiny little bit more of the high mids as well. Um, and lastly, going into this Air EQ plugin. So the Air EQ is very, very similar to this setup here. In fact, it's exactly the same, except you haven't got a sort of switchable frequency on the high shelf. So it really is just a high shelf going into a low pass filter. I call it high, high cut here. Um, so it's, we've got this set up really gently at 6 dB per octave, but it's set to about 7K um, with a fair amount of um, gain on it as well. Again, it just it, it allows you to get that air and then you can control when um, obviously using a shelf, it obviously brings that absolutely everything up to 10, you know, 20, 20 hertz, 20 kilohertz, which you don't really want. You know, I think around around a 12, 12K is a nice sort of uh, place to start rolling off. And 
and this being on a 7 dB proactive slope kind of does that for us nicely. Um, Pro L's, our first Pro L, just catching those additional transients. Obviously, got all those brakes playing at the same time. So, we're just really working on the snare just to bring it all back into line. And then our second Pro L, um, giving a bit more gain reduction and just a bit of limiting itself, just trying to chunk it out a little bit. Fast attack, sorry, slow attack, fast release on both of them uh, to try and keep those transients there. And as far as the drums go, I mean, that's pretty much it. I suppose the only other thing to talk about in this track is the bass line. So, we'll just give that a little mute solo rather we bring it back here so you know kind of that standard vip treatment we change the rhythm up slightly pull the first note out so we double the length of the first note to change the sort of rhythm of it and then when we actually loaded this up this morning there was uh, these three notes were muted so the sort of first place we did is, is is unmute them and see what we were doing so to be fair we had pretty much written this uh vip you know five years ago and it's sort of just been waiting to be rediscovered so i'll just unmute those now so as you can hear, they're just they're just playing on the portmento, so they're just giving it a little bit more rhythm and pitch variation. So it's obviously something we played with when we originally did the tune as well, but they just decided to go with the just kind of straight bass line. I mean, I think this first note kind of clouds things a little bit, so we'll mute that one out. And there we have it. I mean, it's, it's always great to see, you know, uh, you sort of load, load things up and it all comes together really quickly. And obviously, writing this when we wrote the original track was a bit of a bonus, so that made that job really easy. Um, there's a few different variations when you listen to the track, but it's all based around that same kind of thing. Processing wise on the bass, pretty simple stuff. Again, on the virtual channel, we're driving that um, that uh, Neve um, emulation. So you get a little bit of grit and a nice little boost on the bottom end. Going into the uh, Neve preamp and then hitting the LA2 pretty hard as well. And we're just using this uh, Neve EQ to bring out a bit of the top end, or bit out of the, bring a bit of the mids out of that bass line. Um, we have a utility just sort of monoing the, the bottom end, or just monoing it in general, I think, actually. And then the Pro Q, just, just on a tiny little bit of a boost at the um, real low sub. So then that's it really, you know, as I mentioned before, we had to redo all of the EQs, but simple stuff really, luckily there was nothing too surgical, it was more sort of low cuts and, and, and high boosts and stuff like that, just to get things to all sit together. Um, and the compression settings, it's always a thing when you sort of load up old tracks and you've got a new system that you, you may not have the, um, you may not have the parts there or, or whatnot. I mean, I have a, a post-it note in front of me that says, tell it all and save. And I know there's a, an equivalent of that logic as well. Um, it's something really remember to do because it's an absolute lifesaver. You know, we've, we've been revisiting quite a few of the tracks we've done over the last sort of five, six years. And, and uh, as, as organised as I am, you know, you do miss things. Some go missing, this of audio go missing. But collect all the save is uh, is uh, well, it's a lifesaver. <laughs> and it made today's job really easy doing this VIP as well. So the last thing we're going to talk about today is what we have on our master bus. So this is something we do pretty much every bus is to be the setup. Um, sorry, every every uh, track is to be the setup. Our uh, first thing will be the virtual mix. Um, super simple, just going into the knee, into the knee settings there, and the knee pre. Straight into our massive passive. Again, 12k cut, 12k boost. Our first stage of uh, limiting would be the Ozone 7. Now, obviously I've got the settings different here because if I if I pull the limiter down, you won't be able to hear my voice. Um, but that will just be doing about 2 dB, something like that, of gain reduction. And lastly, going into the Pro L. And again, obviously the, the settings here are slightly different just so we can, so we can record this today. But again, we, we will be coming in uh, with about one or two dB just before you start to hear, hear the effects of the limiting. So that's about it really. Hope you've enjoyed today. Hope you found some of it useful. It's been great doing it. Catch you another time. Later.